This is how a stem guided trim would look like. This design is really wonderful but it has a major limitation. If you see here what happens with the stem guided globe valve is that the guide here is at the extreme end but the plug at very high differential pressures will become unstable. So the industry had to come up with a design to cater valves for high differential pressure services and that was the reason why dual ported valves were born. But why double ported valves? If you look at their design you will notice that the plug is supported at both the sides which is also sometimes called as top guided plus bottom guided. Take this masculinian valve for example. What is the issue with this design? Manufacturing dual port requires a lot of material and there is significant increase in size. Something happened in 1960s which changed the world of control valves. The cage guided trim was introduced. The cage would guide the plug exactly where majority of the pressure is felt. So now we have a trim that can handle very high pressure drop. The vendors also adopted this very quickly. Why? Because compared to a double ported valve, the size and the material required for cage guided valves was very less. This meant very low cost production. So vendors could coat very easily at a lower cost. But why did the client or the end user also adapt this design very quickly? Because of easy removal and replacement. If you look at the plug design, it is very different. The plug is contoured. So if you need to change the characteristics or replace the plug, in order to change a globe valve's plug, you must first separate the bonnet from the rest of the body, then decouple the plug and the plug stem from the actuator, and then be careful not to disturb the packing inside the bonnet, which is very difficult and which is one of the most troublesome part in a control valve, the packing. In contrast, if you look at cage guided valves, the valve's flow characteristics may be easily altered by just replacing the cage. We don't have to touch the plug or the stem. And if you need a special kind of trim, that is also available. And that is what brings us to the second important point, cavitation problem. Now, cavitation was faced in the industry from long time, but the solutions to cavitation were very costly. For example, using two valves in series or using a restriction orifice. The cage could now have holes and that also it could have stages so that the pressure can be staged pressure drop and thus avoid cavitation. So costly traditional methods could easily be replaced. Also, the actuator size could be reduced if you use a balanced trim design which is very easy to implement in the cage guided design. This is not the only reason that caused the users to jump into cage guided valves. There was another powerful reason. If you look at a double ported valves, you will notice that they can handle very high pressure drop but are very bad at controlling leakage. Generally, a double ported valves are available with class 2 or class 3 leakage. The cage guided valves have far better leakage control capability. They are capable of having class 4 leakage or even with special additions they can go up till class 6 leakage as per ANSI FCI 70-2. This means lower product loss due to leakage which is a very huge advantage for the end user using cage guided valves. So you might wonder that now there is no reason to have top guided plug design right? But this is not true. Even though double ported valves are now rarely used, however top guided valves are still used in the industry. Why are they used? The reason is top guided plug valves are a good choice when the pressure drop is low. Around 150 bar, 300 or 600 pound rating, you can go for a top guided plug valve design. And the other advantage is the plug valve which is top guided can give us a tighter control on small sizes where the controllable CV value is very low. The top guided plug valves are also good if the service is highly viscous. This selection can also be a cost saver sometimes in smaller line sizes where there is smaller DP and the fluid is very viscous. So if you are preparing a data sheet, you will need a definitive guide, right? So the selection thumb rule is as follows. If the line size is small and the differential pressure is low, you might go for a top guided plug design which is a better choice. If the line size is higher or has higher DP, then the best way is to go for a cage guided design and if it's possible if the fluid is not having solid particles then you can go for a balanced design which will save your actuator cost as well. But now you might think what do I term with respect to balanced and unbalanced trim which are very important terms especially in a control valve. If you want to know what flow direction and other parameters are to be used for selecting a balanced and unbalanced design the video here will really be very helpful to you so I'll meet you there. 